Whether your glass is half full or half empty, we have help. Anthony Robbins is a peak performance coach and motivational speaker who's helped millions of people get through their own personal tough times. Tony, it's good to have you here. Good morning. Thank you, Matt. Let me talk about fear right off yes. the bat. Fear of not being able to make ends meet, provide for your family, fear you're going to lose your job or your home or a combination of the two. How do you tell people to deal, deal with the emotion of fear? I think people have to educate themselves as to what's really happening right now. We are going through a transition. It's a season, and every generation has faced some pretty tough seasons at some stage. Some do it at a very young age, some do it at an older age. And we talk about the great generation. If you were born in 1910, you know, by the time you're 20 years old, you were in a Great Depression. When you were 30, you were in a World War II. So our generation has had it fairly easy. I, you know, we've all experienced pain. I, I'm, you know, I'm sure you've experienced it in your family. I have in mine. But we haven't experienced it at a cultural level to the extreme that we're starting to experience So, right so you're now. saying we haven't been adversity tested. We, we, we lived through a period where mortgages seemed too good to be true, so we bought bigger houses. That's right. Where gas seemed relatively cheap, so we bought more and bigger cars. Where the stock market was booming, so we invested and invested. Now we're finally seeing adversity? We're seeing it at a much deeper level, and we're going to see more of it. I mean, we have $9.5 trillion worth of debt against the GDP that's you know $13.5 trillion. So there are real challenges, and they're going to go away tomorrow. But here's what we have to be able to do. With every season, there are challenges, just like nature seasons, and there are opportunities. And right now, while you're seeing, you know, huge deflation that we're seeing right now in prices of real estate, we're seeing people losing their homes at 250,000 people a month. We're putting ourselves in a position, we see this tremendous volatility in the stock market. But at the same time right now, commodities, oil, gold, foodstuffs are exploding. They're in a bull market. Right now, if you try to use the U.S. dollar over in Europe, you get to see that you know, it's dropped by 40%. But if you took that same money and you're investing in Vietnam, even if you're just a little investor just getting going, your money goes a long way and you're in an economy that is growing at a different rate. I like your concept of looking for the bright side, the opportunity, as you put it. But if the guy's calling you at night as you're sitting down to have dinner and he's trying to collect on the bills and, and you're worried about losing your benefits at work, it's tough to look outside your immediate mission misery and see opportunity. So That's how right. do you coach people to do that? How do they get over that hump? You have to train yourself emotionally and mentally. It's like anything else. People have a habit. When 911 happened, I was together with about 2,500 people from 45 countries. It hit. We got the phone call at 3 in the morning. We're actually in Hawaii. And I had about 110 different people from the financial district here. Many people live there. So 65 people plus had lost their entire business, all their friends, all their family. What happened that day is you saw people's emotional fitness. People that are angry got angry. They always get angry. People that were fearful got even more fearful. It was the end times. There were individuals there that were caretakers, and they were out there finding it. So it's a habit to find your emotions. So what I'd say to people is you have to discover what your emotional pattern in is, and then you condition the emotion you do need. In those situations, what you need more than anything else is creativity, determination. You have to have some emotions that will get you over it, because the force that shapes the marketplace up and down is the force that shapes your life. Two, it's emotion. Two quick things. Phil Graham, former senator, got in some trouble last week when he said we become a nation of whiners when dealing with this economy. Is there some truth to it in your opinion? Well, I, I think we're emotionally unfit as much as we could be. I mean, there's no question that many people, I mean, I've had a doctor come to me and say, uh, you have a tumor in your brain. I want to operate. Uh, so is Lance Armstrong. The question is, when those things happen, what do you focus on? What does it mean? What do you do? Do you focus on, you know, why did this happen to me? Or what does it mean? Is it over? Or are you just beginning? Is this, is this a gift? In Lance's case, he found a way to take enough action. You know, after you, cancer, you know, deal with cancer, you look over at you know, somebody on a bicycle, and it's pretty easy. You win seven of these in a row. So if we're supposed to get in this emotional good shape earlier on in our lives, is there an opportunity here, Tony, for parents? You know, families are going through a hard time. Fa parents of kids, and I'm talking about 10, 12, 14-year-old, not 3, 4-year-old, to be honest and open with their kids and talk to them openly about what the family's facing and what people in this country are facing so that they don't go by, go on thinking money grows on trees? Well, I think here's what's really great. We're going to become emotionally fit because we have to. Necessity is there. But the thing that will give people hope is not positive thinking. It's role models. Sir John Templeton is one of my heroes. I interviewed him uh, not long ago, and he just passed away, as you probably know, about a week ago. And here's a man to start with nothing. In 1939... You know, Hitler is invading, and he went out at that time and said, you know, maximum pessimism is when you can do the best. This is when you can grow. He went out and he took stocks here in the U.S. that were on the floor and got them for a dollar each, borrowed $10,000, and built the basis of a multi-billion dollar empire. Today, even though he's passed, he has this 
foundation that's right, we had a billion and a half dollar endowment. It gives away seventy million dollars a year, and it's all because this man, when Japan after the war went, to the, that's where he went. So that, when Brazil and when South America's inflation was going crazy, that's where he went. When no one went to China, that's where he went. If you go to where maximum pessimism is, you can shift it. But with your kids. They're going to have to change. They don't have a choice. And that's what's going to make us stronger. Necessity is going to make it happen. We can step up, though, by modeling. And one last thing. Quickly, Finding a way to get outside yourself. When things are the worst for you, there's always somebody doing worse. Two-thirds or almost a little more than half this planet lives on $2 a day. We're stronger than we think we are. And we can train ourselves to be able to take advantage of the tough times. tough for us, but but there, for the grace of God, there's someone else in a worse situation. And if you help them, it changes you, too. Tony Robbins. Tony, thanks. Good to have you here. 